Hello. Uh, this, uh, this video is in response to Dr. Robert Bussard's video posted on YouTube uh, regarding an internal electrostatic confinement fusion device. Uh, the purpose of this video presentation is to critique and look at from an engineering perspective Dr. Bissard's machine, uh, where, where does it make sense, where are there giant question marks, where, where should we be skeptical, and what we should do. And the idea is to spark discussion that would possibly further more research into this remarkable yet uh, interesting and device that should be accepted with criticism. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about conventional internal electrostatic confinement fusion devices. Then I'm going to go into how Dr. Bussard tweaked the existing devices to make his polywell. I'm going to talk about the history behind the polywell. I'm going to go into Bussard's big claim about its success. I'm going to touch on the big question marks about where this device makes sense, where it does not make sense. And then I'm going to touch on some conclusions about maybe the implication of this device. So the first question we want to ask is, what is internal electrostatic confinement fusion? Well, here's a picture of one of these devices. This picture is from University of Wisconsin at Madison. It's a big vacuum chamber with two metal cages inside it. What you do is you create a voltage drop between the two cages. So you bias one cage negative and one cage positive. Then inside this vacuum chamber you fire in some charged particles like uh, electrons or charged hydrogen nucleuses or deuterium or tritium. The ions see the voltage drop between the cages like a giant hill. And they fall down the hill and build up enough kinetic energy to slam into one another on the, in the middle and fuse together. This machine is a fuser. So why don't we use this machine as an energy producing device? Well, it's very simple. Uh, this machine can never produce energy. As long as these cages are in this machine, it will be an energy loser. What happens is particles hit the cages and are conducted out of the device. So the cage acts like a giant energy leak, and therefore this machine can, is a net energy loser. Uh, scientists and engineers looked at this machine uh, back in the 30s and 40s and immediately disregarded it because they said, well, as long as the cages are there, it's a loser. So they went on to create the tokamak and ICF fusion. A bit more about this device. Uh, these are some pictures of the fuser in operation. It was conceived in the 30s. It was patented in the late 60s. And it is a net energy loser. But it's used at science labs uh, and universities as a cheap, easy way to test fusion particles. Um, as I say, it's a net loser because of this metal grid. As long as the metal grid 
is present, there is no energy gain. And that was the problem that Dr. Robert Bissard came across in the 1980s. He looked at these devices and thought, how can I get rid of this metal grid to improve this reactor so that maybe I can make a power producing device? So first question is, who is Robert Bussard? Well, he was born in 1928. He received his PhD in physics from Princeton in 1961. He was director of the U.S. Atomic Energy Commission, which is the forerunner to the Department of Energy. He has expanded tokamak research and worked at various national labs. And he came up with the idea for the polywell device. I'm going to show you a picture of the polywell. This is the machine that he created. How does this work? You can see it's six metal rings in a cube. And each ring has a current going through it, a voltage, electricity in blue. All moving charge creates a magnetic field. So as the current swirls around and around this ring, magnetic field is generated into and out of the cube, seen in red. The magnetic fields go into and out of the cube, and in the center there's a spot where there is no magnetic field because all the fields cancel each other out. Now what you do is you inject electrons into the center. The electrons are attracted into the center by the magnetic field and held there in place. The magnetic field contains the electrons in that spot where there is no magnetic field. As electrons pile up in the center, more and more and more, they create a ball that pushes and pulls against the magnetic field to create a point charge, a point charge of negative energy in the center. So this point charge acts like a giant voltage drop. Then, you release ions, charged particles, maybe a hydrogen nucleus, or carbon, or boron, positively charged ions, into the center of this device. They are attracted by the negative field and fly into the center and smash together, like trains smashing into one another and fuse together. So essentially, he's removed the negative cage with a negative point charge. And he's created a hill where positive ions fall down and smash into one another. This is a very controversial idea for a number of reasons that we're going to discuss in a little bit. Um, the main criticism physicists have with this device is they don't believe that you can make a quasi-spherical or spherical magnetic containment field for these electrons. They don't believe you can make a ball of electrons contained in a magnetic field like this. Bussard responded to that by saying, in the push and pull of electrons and magnetic field forces, as the electrons pile up in the center, it's like blowing up a balloon. And you can get this ball of electrons. 